I just moved to Dunedin and didn't know any of them. We were in Mrs. Strain's social studies class and we had all been paired up for an assignment until Lindsay had started making a huge scene to everyone that she didn't want to go with a girl called Georgina. So I put my hand up and said, well, I'll go with Lindsay and we've been great friends ever since. <laughs> Lindsay was always a class clown, very loud, very honest and always had lots of the teachers. Lindsay got me into playing soccer and we played together for years. And we thought we were pretty cool, especially around four Yeah. <laughs> As we got older, I got Lindsay out of her shell and made her come out to the parties. One of the first parties Lindsay went to, and she only remembered this the other day, she ended up stabbing someone. <laughs> By accident. <laughs> I used to have a new party myself and break into my parents' house when they were away for weekends. Lindsay's always the first to arrive and help me set up and the last to leave, help clean up. Denny always said I corrupted Lindsay. Sorry, Denny. <laughs> in secret form, Lindsay started to be secretive, sneaking off and not telling anyone where she was going. After a lot of interrogating, we discovered she had a secret boyfriend, and we were finally introduced to Andrew. One of my first memories of Andrew was when Lindsay had just had her major jaw surgery. I went to visit her at hospital, and then there was Andrew, fetching her water and wiping away her dribble. It was very sweet, and it must have been love. <laughs> Lindsay was part of our family. My parents died away and my sister's cancer used to love having her around. And here's always something from them. Oh, thank you. To say thank you you on your big day. Um, Lindsay, you're a great friend, funny, honest and a perfectionist. You always put everyone else before yourself and that's what we love about you. I know Andrew is going to take great care of you for the rest of your life. You're perfect for each other. I'd like to make a toast to the happy couple after 12 years together, finally. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alana. And moving right along, the students will say a few words. Hello. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Stu, the best man. I'd just like to say a few words. I guess I should start with how I know uh, Andy. The first time I met Andy was at a computer lab about 11 years ago. Not long after that, I joined his team and we became pretty good friends. Uh, this was a good choice for me, as Andy and I both got to go to Korea to represent New Zealand on the World Cup Games. Truth be told, I very much owe Andy for this. As uh, he got asked to join the top New Zealand team and told them he would only join if I could too. <laughs> and he's always looked out for me. <coughs> His friendships um, made a massive impact on my life in a way I, could, I couldn't ever thought possible. I still remember the amazing times we had over the years. All the great times at 123 Frederick Street, the landing, Lynn's wanting to make it with eight little girls in her. Yes, she was a little bit drunk. Being part of your teams in both Counter-Strike and Battlefield, watching you uh, take down the, some of the best players in the world. My birthday party. Now, I had a 90th birthday party, and uh, Lynn's decided to, uh, you know, Lynn's and Andy both decided to that uh, were this for me, and um, they decided to make some homemade pieces, and they're pretty good. It was a good night all around, and, but she took some photos, and I had a pretty horrendous ear at the time, and they went up on the old counter at forums, and I did not <laughs> live it down for a, a, a long while. Another great time I had with um, Andy Lins is we stayed with a guy named Rocky Grules. He, uh, he lived up in Auckland, we had to stay with him because we were in Cuban so we got up there. And, um, <laughs> he is uh, a bit of a character. One time we were with him, we, uh, we actually missed our flight because we couldn't get him out of bed. So uh, that was a bit annoying to say the least. And another time was um, me, Andy, and I'm not sure if he was there, but we had to send a monitor back to one of the guys. He'd driven up from Auckland, up from Wellington to Auckland, and he was driving back and he left his monitor behind. So it was a bit of an inconvenience for us. So we decided that. We would um, we'd send it back for him, but a bit of a surprise. We, um, we wrapped it pretty badly and we needed something to pack the box with. 
and all that Dan really had was porno magazines. So we filled up all of them, and uh, by the time we got there, they were sort of coming out of the box. But we didn't send it to his home address, we sent it to his work address. So his secretary was a bit concerned when he had a whole box of porn on the way. And another time was with um, Andy Lins was in Wellington. And we had a man up there, it was a birthday party for um, one of the SMG guys, the, the leader of it, it was his birthday. And that day we decided that we'd share a room, you know, to cut down on cost. So Lynn's organised two two beds in the in the park by well, the hotel and it was all good. But the night went on and he got a bit sick. He uh, he uh, had a bit too much to drink and all I remember is him um, throwing up a bit all night long. <laughs> so it wasn't too good. And another man, um, this is sort of a story for Lynn's. We had land in the name a guy named Simon Perry, and uh, he, uh, he invited us all over, and it was all good, and it was about 9 or 10 o'clock, and uh, he decided to kick us all out. Why are you kicking us all out? Apparently, he had a girl coming over, and we are all in this room, all our computers there, everything. And um, so, as a sort of a gift, Lynn decided to put all the all porn on all the, all the screens, <laughs> and he walks in. He walks and he wasn't very happy, but um, <laughs> he wasn't too good. The one thing I, um, I noticed when I was thinking about all the good old times was it was never just ambulance, it was them both together. Uh, it was awesome watching them take the final step, the final, commit, uh, the final level of committing to one another marriage. Some people only see this as a piece of paper, but, uh, but to me it means a whole lot more, and I'm honoured to be a part of that. Thank you both so much for being part of my life. I wish you all the best to any of us. Thank you, Stu. Uh, now we've gone from the side of the cave and we're over the middle. And Andrew's going to go up next. So 
hopefully uh, Lindsay will share the same genes and it's amazing when she's 65 as well. <laughs> so I think um, Harold, I think we get on pretty well as well, which is really good. And um, you, like a, you like a few drinks, you like a few bits here and there. So one of the phrases that sticks out in my mind when I think of you is, don't tell Cherie. <laughs> That'd be right, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Cherie, um, so kind and polite. And sort of your balance out, Harold, I think. Yeah, you guys are cute together. Yeah. Then we go to Lise. Now, Lise, stick your hand up, Lise, for those who don't know. Woo! One of our Aussie guests tonight. Um, I met Lisa back in Wellington when I worked for Mobile and uh, we did a variety show and basically it was a really bad karaoke ABBA mashup. We basically substituted the words from ABBA songs and made it into sort of a mobile thing. And um, we had a, a presentation that Lindsay helped me on and, uh, with lots of David Hesselhoff and Mr T and random photos in the background. And anyway, we, um, we sung this karaoke in a group and um, we ended up getting first place so we did really well. It was just a bit of fun, and um, ever since then we've just been good friends and stayed in touch. And um, yeah, like Lisa's had some good dinner parties that have gone to a Melbourne, and she's a fantastic cook as well. So yeah, she sort of we kind of need social, I think, Lindsay and I a lot. So Lisa sort of helped us to get out of there and you know socialise a bit more. Yeah. Now we move on to what? Robin is one of the most relaxed guys you'll ever meet. <laughs> he likes he's, he likes, he's got a sweet tooth. He's at the Hard Rock and Pantera and that. And we're going to come watch you one night when you're performing. <laughs> Good luck getting in the door. It's full. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Robin, Robin's awesome. And you guys are just such a few couple of them. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like a little bit like Lindsay and I, like we've got the introvert extrovert sort of combo going on, so. Yeah. <laughs> now we move to Vinny, or Vince, or Vinny. <laughs> I met Vince playing Counter Strike, so it's sort of been probably about 11 years ago, in 2000. Um, Counter Strike's a video game, for those of you who don't know. Um, He's, uh, I think I poached him for GE. I can't remember quite how it went, but yeah. And we played together in a couple of camp plans, and um, yeah, we shared some good laughs, and Lynn's always asking the other guys like to do, and it's always good value, so. And uh, then his favorite drink is an apple martini. So, I don't know if we have any of those tonight. No, they don't have any Yeah, maybe later we can put you away. And then Greg, or Ras, we, uh, we met through Counter-Strike as well, and uh, yeah, Ras was um, a really good player, and we played, probably the highlight was with when we played in, uh, in Manticore, I'd say, it was when we were picking. We did really well together. One funny story is one night, uh, Greg and Simon come over, Simon's another guy we used to play with, and uh, they wanted to go out drinking. We were, we're not really into it, were we? Lindsay um, sort of said to them, well, if you want us to come drinking, you've got to dance to this Bring It On music. So we had it on in the background, and they had to do this like, little dance, and yeah, it was good value. So they ended up getting us out in the end. Then we moved to Shane. Shane um, played with you in Counter-Strike, and then moved on to uh, Battlefield Vietnam, which is another game. Now, Battlefield Vietnam, we were in a clan called um, SVO, which is um, probably the most dominant clan I've been in, which in terms of, we were probably the best in Australasia. And um, yeah, Shane was a, an awesome chopper pilot, so um, if you ever need anyone to fly your chopper, um, he's your man, so <laughs> maybe he might be a little intoxicated. But <laughs> We've got Kay. Kay has made it tonight. Now we had um, 
we invited Tim of the Thai people to come tonight, and she was the only one who could make it. Um, the other nine um, basically couldn't make it due to the floods in Bangkok, which is a bit of a shame, but um, we're really happy we could make it tonight, okay? And uh, you've got a friend, uh, Nan, yeah? Nana? 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 So I'll make them feel welcome and say hello. But I worked with um, Kay when I was uh, in, was in New Zealand, I was in New Zealand, wasn't I? And then I came into Australia and we worked together, so yeah, we had a few laughs together. Kay is quite a funny Thai person, she's quite outgoing, she's uh, not the norm, so yeah. Now we get to the, like, the last couple of people, we'll talk to Stu. Where do I start? Well, so we've known each other probably since 2000. Um, we've played a lot of games together. Been in a lot of different plans, probably about six different teams together. Um, as Stu said before, we went to the, the World Cyber Games in 2002, which is like a, it's like the Olympics for gaming, so it's pretty nerdy, but we went to um, Korea and um, we stayed in this village, and the village was actually the same village that um, they had the World Cup players stay in, in, in 2000. So we basically went out there and got treated like gods, it was amazing, so... <laughs> they're, they're back on their games over there. Yeah. So that was one of the highlights, I mean, uh, yeah, we really enjoyed that. Um, but Stu, you're a good mate, you're honest, you've got a kind heart, and you're trustworthy, and um, yeah, that, you know, you're a good man. <laughs> and lastly, I just want to say something about Lindsay. Twelve and a half years in the making. <laughs> what I like about Lindsay is she's funny. We have a lot of laughs. We have a lot of highs. We've had a few lows, but we've managed to work through them. And help each other and support each other. She's the most selfless person that I know. She's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she would do anything for me, and that, you know, that's amazing. And she gives me the freedom to be who I want to be, do what I want to do. For people that know me, they probably think I'm pretty lazy, but you know, obviously I'll take it. So, and she's definitely a low maintenance chick as well. So she doesn't ask much. Um, she gives a lot. So I guess in summary I'd just like to say thank you all for coming tonight and have a great night. <laughs>
Um, and we've got our friend Jill here. Jill, Jillian, Shill, Shillbag. Um, I'd just like to say that, you know, she's been in our lives ever since we were very, very little. Um, I do remember, well, I'm not sure if I remember it because I did get KO'd, but whilst I was in Jill's care as a child, I got run over. <laughs> Me and her son, Matthew, were playing on the footpath, then on the road apparently, I was spinning round and round. Um, and I really don't know how we ended up out there because it's quite dark in the house, but you know, no, it's fine. She was very upset that I got run over and was in hospital for three and a half months. But, um, no, Jill, it's been fantastic. And also, Jill's um, late husband, Brian, um, you know, he played a big role in me growing up as well. I used to love going around there and he'd make home brew and he'd have, he worked for Cadbury's, and if anyone knows me, I'm a chocolate fan. So I used to try and be good and Ryan would come out with the, you know, the Hudson's biscuits at the end of the night and I'd always ask for two and he'd always give me three. So no, yeah, we really love him too, so yeah. Um, and Abby and Ash, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate that you decided to do the Asia thing and you're supporting the, the family, the only cousins that have attended. So we hope you're enjoying your trip and thanks so much for coming. We live with Abby while the house is being built in Melbourne, so yeah, and I used to babysit Abby as a child, which is beautiful, and Ash is very lucky to have her too. Sorry, I didn't put a ring on it. Um, <laughs> Courtney and Marcel, thank you so much for coming, Marcel. I'm so glad you look fantastic in your suit. Um, yeah, and, and thank you so much for staying with us, guys, at the um, Belvin Ambry. We really enjoyed having you there, and Courtney, your dress looks fantastic. You look great. So, um, thanks again for coming and making it far and catch up again with Tom. Greg and your tribe over there in the corner. <laughs> thank you again so much for coming. You're all brilliant to make my photos look beautiful, so thank you. <laughs> Along with the rest of the guests, you also do. Um, yeah, Greg, thanks for making the trip from Amsterdam or wherever it was Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah, Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen you in two and a half years and you're looking fantastic. So, yeah. She has a man, maybe it's that, the oh, man yeah. the blue. <laughs> so we hope that, um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to attend this wedding, but maybe we will be attending yours, so again, thanks all for coming, and, um, you know, to Jamie and Stacey and um, Waylon, thank you for joining us as well. It's the first time, we've, not, not Jamie, but Stacey and Waylon, the first time we've met you, and we're just happy that you came. Um, and to Alana. Oh, I should say Esther first. Esther, again, thanks for coming and we've had so much fun with you. I used to babysit Esther as she was, notice that she was three years old. Beautiful, beautiful child. And apparently I tried taking her at Alana's 21st, although I was drunk and I don't really remember much. <laughs> but um, Esther, thank you and thank you so much for being organised. My dress had a wee mishap before and Esther got out the sewing kit and sewed it up. So again, thanks for attending. <laughs> Um, Alana, what can I say about you? Just, you know, ever since we first known each other, you've just been real, and that's great. There's no scattiness, there's no backstabbing, it's straight up, you know, just enjoyed our friendship, and yeah, you again corrupted me a little. Um, no, I'm just kidding. No, but you're a beautiful person, and I wish you all the best in your future, and I just want to say, yeah, you're just absolutely amazing. The time we had playing soccer was awesome. We just had an awesome time. We partied hard, we had fun. And thank you so much for making this trip amazing. And you look amazing. So thank you very much. And you're beautiful. And yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, to Andrew. I don't really have much to say. I think he summarised it pretty well. But, um, yeah, we don't, you know, I don't know. I, love I don't know, like, we met a very long time ago and I guess our relationship has grown stronger, there has been hurdles and stuff, but, you know, he's put up for me for 12 and a half years, what can I say? It's not been easy, but um, I've got the ring on now, it's stuck with me. So, um, no, thank you very much, Andrew, for, um, you know, being my partner in life and making me happy and, you know, my mum loves you, which is, a bonus. They always pick on me when she comes, but that's fine, I can handle that. Um, but yeah, no, I, yeah, I would just like to say thanks for, you know, 
being there for me when I needed you and all the back massages and calming me down when I needed it. Um, you've been fantastic and I hope that, you know, our life together continues to be great. I love you. <laughs>
touch me I can feel how much you love me And it just blows me away I've never been this close to anyone Or anything I can hear your thoughts I can see your dreams